Quad City Bay Area, thank you for a ten dollar super chat. Is analog VD Digi same when example at two hundred seven hundred milliwatts? Quad City Bay Area, what the hell? Did you have a stroke in the middle of writing this question? I have no idea what you're asking. Blunty, do you have any idea? Can you parse this for me? Yeah, is analog video uh, the same as digital when you compare them at the same power level? I think that's what he's No, digital's better. Digital, I feel like digital has, at the same power level, you know, Apple's... By the way, first of all, a digital at 700 milliwatts is not at the same power level. Can we, can we just get that out of the way real quick? Chris Rosser discovered that when an analog video transmitter is operating at 700 milliwatts, the video transmitter is outputting 700 milliwatts, and that is being fed into an antenna, which is further increasing or focusing the output power. So the, the, the analog video trans, whereas the digital video transmitters, for whatever reason, their output power is after the antenna. So the analog video transmitter has about 2 dBi advantage, 2 dB gain advantage compared to the video. The digital video transmitter is coming into the race with one hand behind its back. It's operating at a lower output power level, even though technically they both say they're operating at 700 milliwatts. It's not an apples to apples comparison. I'm not even sure why. Why would the digit? Maybe part of the reason is that the digital video transmitters, they're like, God, if we said, if we told everybody we were operating at 250 milliwatts, they'd lose their mind. We have to say we're operating at higher power levels or no one will buy our products. I don't know the answer. DJI figured out how to beat the game. And with the O3, they just don't tell you what its output power is. Ha ha ha. Can't complain about the output power if you don't know what the output power is. Mm. Um, but so it, even if you said that they were apples to apples on par, digital is still winning because it's actually using less power. Um. But I think that even set like 700 milliwatts to 700 milliwatts, I think that digital maintains the usable image longer. That's my opinion. Ooh, this is an interesting one. Blown stuff FPV. I have both the V1 DJI goggles and the goggles too. For better reception doing mid or long range, you think I should use my old V1 goggle with a good patch and Omnis or update the firmware and use the goggles too instead. So you've got a Vista video transmitter. I infer. Otherwise, this wouldn't... Because the Vista doesn't work with the V1. I mean, the O3 doesn't work with the V1. Um, I think you're going to get better range with a good setup patch. Circular... I assume you've got circular polarized antennas on the aircraft because that's usually what the Vista has. I think you're going to get better range with a circular polarized patch on the v V1 goggle than upgrading the firmware to the G2. Two reasons for that. The first one is that some, and Blunty, you brought this up in the comments. I saw you talking about this on the Discord server. Some people think that the oath, that the Vista doesn't get as good range on the G2 goggles as it does on the V2 goggles, that it doesn't go to full power with the, with the new firmware. Also, the Vista will have circular antennas, but the G2 will have linear antennas. You could solve that by putting linear antennas on the Vista, though. But I think um, I think in general you'll probably get a little bit better range with with good patch antennas on the V1s than by going to the G2s. We got a question here from Nino Health. Nino Health, how much am I really disturbing other people in services if I fly a one watt VTX and uh, and transmitter? Um, assuming you're using the 5.8 gigahertz band and the 2.4 gigahertz band, it, 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 I, some potentially like there are people, if you're on 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and you power up your controller and you're standing right next to a device, you could reduce the performance of that device or even cause it to lose connection. It's there are like express LRS which operates in 2.4 gigahertz has technology built in that re that reduces its probability of interfering with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, but the chance is never zero. Um, and in terms of 5.8 gigahertz, your video transmitter absolutely can interfere with Wi-Fi and cause a reduction in throughput. And that goes both ways. The Wi-Fi will interfere with you. The answer to your question is impossible to, to there's no simple answer to that question. It depends on the frequency that you're using. It depends on your proximity, 
your closeness to the object, to the to the to the device in question. So, in you know, like a worst case scenario would be that when you plug in your drone, you completely knock out somebody's Wi-Fi. That's not likely, but it's not it's not completely implausible either. Super Deluxe has a great question. Is Crossfire Protocol so good that ELRS can't come up with a better one? Or is it just easier to stand on the shoulders of giants? Here's the thing, Super Deluxe. Um, I, I don't know the details of the Crossfire Protocol, all the ins and outs. I don't know. Could the ELRS devs come up with something better if they started from scratch? I'm going to say probably, only because... Crossfire hasn't like been actively developed in a long time. At least that's my impression. So probably there are optimizations that the ELRS devs could come up with that would be better. I don't know. Like what are the chances that there's just no way they could improve it, right? But the problem, like look at what happened with Immersion RC Ghost. Immersion RC released the Ghost video transmit, or uh, sorry, the Ghost receivers, the Ghost, and Betaflight added support for Ghost. And now Ghost is, a lot of racers still run Ghost, but Ghost didn't reach like widespread mass adoption. And the Betaflight devs now have this protocol that's baked into their code. It's taken up space. Well, with the cloud build functionality, it's no longer taking up space. So I guess that's nice. But there's, there's, maintenance costs to having new protocols added to the code, right? There's there's new bugs to find, new quirks, need to update the code when the protocol changes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think what we have here is a case where Crossfire is more than good enough and it's widely supported. We're not just talking about beta flight. ArduPilot supports Crossfire. INAV supports Crossfire. So let's say the ExpressLRS devs were like, we're going to make a new protocol. And by the way, I want to be really clear. ExpressLRS doesn't use Crossfire over the air. ExpressLRS is not just a copy-paste of Crossfire. And that's why it runs faster than Crossfire. Over the air, ExpressLRS is its own unique, distinct air protocol that is like improved on Crossfire in a lot of ways. But when the signal gets to the receiver and the receiver has to send it to the flight controller or when the module needs to get signal from the radio, they use Crossfire for that because everything already supports Crossfire and it's good enough. And so if they release their own protocol, they would have to get that baked into Edge TX. They'd have to get that baked into Betaflight, RGPilot, INAV, everything. It's not worth it. It's a case where the standard that exists is good enough and the cost of moving to a new standard is not worth it. Right? Exactly. Thank you, Plenty. We're going to finally have a meme that, but it's not really a meme, that, uh, that Blunty posted. Exactly. There's always an XKCD for any situation. <laughs> 